you know, what is the, the gut microbiome? We know that it's a community of microorganisms, and really we're finding out so much more about the microbiome. There's a lot of research that's going on. Um, it can affect all different parts of our health. We know that it's the largest microbial population in our body, and it's located in the colon or what we call as the gut. And um, the majority of those microbes live in the human body and they help maintain our physical and we're finding out even mental health. Yeah, <clears throat> there's more and more known about it. So the growing evidence microbiota community of normal bacteria found in the human body, 10 trillion to 100 trillion bacteria living in our gut, it's a lot, and greater than 160 different species. Growing evidence that different microbiota, how do you say it, species, work together to benefit our health, possibly prevention of diabetes, um, obesity, heart disease, and cancer, um, and possibly play a role in depression, constipation, diarrhea, um, irritable bowel syndrome, um, skin conditions, weight management, and possibly cognition. So some research is showing a decrease in colon cancer and Crohn, um, Crohn's disease, by um, having more information about this. Um, and a person with a healthy adult gut will have a better nutritional status, fewer comorbidities, and greater overall health. So we have good versus bad bacteria, so what to eat? So prebiotics is the food source, um, and they act as fertilizers for, for good bacteria to flourish within the gut. Prebiotics are complex carbohydrates in the form of indigestible plant fiber. This, this dietary fiber can only be broken down and fermented by the good bacteria in your colon. Pro prebiotics are found in the foods shown on the slide there, and also wheat, honey, barley, tomato, rye, peas, beans, and bananas. Also asparagus, leeks, this is a leek, the onion, and then onions, garlic, and artichokes. So I have a jar of marinated artichokes. <laughs> so trying to use these in cooking help. They're prebiotic, and they work with the probiotics. So the, the reason why they help is because of the fermentation process. So once the fermentation process takes place, there are short-chain fatty acids that are released. And that lowers the pH level in the gut so that there are less microorganisms that are kind of the bad microorganisms. And the lower pH is acidic. Right, yeah. more acidic. So that's why they're lower in that certain type of microbe. So those may really help support an immune system. So having those short chain fatty acids help with um, the immune properties and also support stabilizing blood glucose and cholesterol. So there's a lot that we're finding out physically about how these are working. You may see prebiotics listed as inulin or fructooligosaccharides, galactooligosaccharides, cellulose, or fructans. And those are the prebiotics. They're the naturally non-digestible foods that stimulate growth and activity of the beneficial gut bacteria. So we know that, um, oh, welcome. We have some more people joining oh, us. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Here's presentations um, up we here. We know that the, the prebiotics um, are the food for the probiotics. So um, welcome, ladies. So uh, those kind of are the, they feed the good bacteria, these prebiotics. Just like Nancy said, those are like the food for the probiotics. So you want to have these foods that she mentioned, like artichokes, leeks, onions, because those help feed those probiotics and we need those in the, in the gut. They prevent the growth of the bad bacteria, as we mentioned. They improve the immune function and then they help also make enzymes that help um, digest the food. They also fix the gut microbiome after antibiotic therapy. So that's a really big one to make sure that we have those um, good bacteria in our gut. We're gonna talk about probiotics more, but we're looking at um, yogurt as your probiotic source, especially for people going through treatment. We usually ask that you stop taking a, a oral probiotic, a pill form, but the yogurt is fine. Um, so back to prebiotics, just uh, we'll review the foods again. There's some more, bananas, 
onions, garlic, leeks, we mentioned, asparagus, so that'll be coming out soon for spring, artichokes, whether fresh or marinated, soybeans, and whole wheat foods. Um, also seeds, lentils, root vegetables, which we have here, some butternut squash, acorn squash, chickpeas, cocoa extracts, nuts, beans, and apples. So it's pretty widely, you know, throughout our food choices, um, but prebiotics feed the gut. Um, so yeah, there's just many fruits and vegetables and whole grains that contain the prebiotic. Um, and you can also get prebiotics through supplements, but we prefer that you get it from food. Um, and although there's no recommendation for prebiotics, incorporating adequate amounts of fruits and vegetables and whole grains um, will ensure that you're getting what you need. So what are probiotics? Um, and those would be the good bacteria. And um, those are the bacteria that we want to have in the gut. So the good bacteria are the, are the same or similar to bacteria that's already found in the body. So we want to have the prebiotics that help feed the probiotics, mm -hmm. and that keeps the um, microbiome uh, balanced. The live bacteria or yeast are good for your health, especially the digestive system, as we mentioned. So the probiotics are dependent on those prebiotics as their main food source, and the probiotics are found in foods that naturally contain that bacteria. They are also found in supplements, as Nancy mentioned, and they contain the live active bacteria. So two well-known types of probiotics are the lactobacillus and then the bifidobacterium. And we have seen studies about how those two in particular are very helpful. So that's a good thing to look for on your label, um, the lactobacillus and the bifidobacteria. You know, certain antibiotics, um, you know, can have some pretty bad side effects. And so I remember I was taking an antibiotic and um, I was told when you first take it, I should go to the pharmacist, like at a Walgreens or whatever, and ask them what's the appropriate probiotic to take. So I took an oral probiotic, but then I bought yogurt too, because I didn't want any of those side effects. And you know what? I didn't get any. And that, that antibiotic was known for that. So it's kind of being ahead of the game kind of thing. But I wanted to mention too that often prebiotics and probiotics, um, they're referred to as the dynamic duo. They create like a symbiotic relationship. So they like work together in the gut. So by eating a variety of fruits and vegetables, you're pretty much getting your prebiotics. And then by including yogurt in your diet, um, you're getting that balance. So yogurt's good. Um, yeah. So then some probiotic food sources. Um, let's see, yogurt's a common probiotic food. Other fermented probiotic containing foods include aged cheeses, kefir, kimchi, sauerkraut, miso, which is fermented soybean, pickled vegetables, and tempa, uh, which is fermented soybeans. Yeah, um, and we do have some soy sauce up here. The low sodium, we like the low sodium. <laughs> it still fine. gives you good flavor. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, suggestions uh, for a substitute for yogurt for people who are lactose intolerant. You can get a lactose-free yogurt. And more and more, the major grocery stores do carry it. So we're lucky that way. I was just going to note that kimchi is not recommended for immune compromised patients um, or kombucha too, right? Right, or yeah. kombucha. Yeah, yeah, either one of those, even though they do have some prebiotics, that's not recommended no. um, for because of the food safety risk. Yeah. Yeah. And then some other food sources of probiotics. There's a picture, lactobacillus, milk and cheeses, kefir, sauerkraut kimchi, tempa, kombucha, and pickles. Um, you know, that Activia yogurt, that has live cultures. If someone is going through treatment and is experiencing diarrhea, we don't recommend Activia because that stimulates the gut. So you would want just kind of a regular yogurt. So what about probiotic supplements? As Nancy mentioned, we don't recommend um, starting a new probiotic if you're in treatment. But usually we'll look at each individual case and talk with our team about whether or not probiotics are okay. Sometimes we have patients that are um, have a history of 
IBS or some other GI concern, and they've been taking a probiotic for many years, yeah. then uh, a lot of times the doctor or the APN will say, let's not upset the apple cart. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll say to go ahead and take it. But we leave it up to those professionals That's to right. give the okay. Yeah. 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 Um, if you're in the hospital for some reason, um, it's not recommended to have the probiotic, but it's always good just to check with your team because everyone is an individual and they may have different um, things going on. Um, but if there is a probiotic supplement that you're taking or you're out of treatment, the Align, which is on the slide here or the slide right before it, <laughs> <laughs> um, that is uh is one that could be recommended and um, many of them have a combination of the bifidobacteria the lactobacillus and also the saccharomyces so um it says there on the slide just a reminder to talk with your physician or and your dietitian to fill out figure out which supplements would be okay as far as the probiotics so how do you choose them? You want to make sure to choose a supplement that's been tested and patented for humans. There are a lot of um, ones out there that aren't regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. And then because of that, we don't know if they're added ingredients that might not be acceptable or could be a food safety risk. So we don't recommend those. Um, and you want to make sure they have live active cultures, at least one billion colony forming units, CFUs, is what is recommended. Um, a in a time, uh, a, you want to make sure it's a time release or coated capsule, and that may survive better in the acid of your stomach so that it's kind of released um, over time. And then to make sure to look at the instructions of the supplements, because many of them, because they have live cultures, need to be refrigerated. So that's something just to make sure you're reading those instructions. So you want to consider choosing products that have a certified seal. And um, you can see these um, seals here. The, the NSF is um, one that we use a lot uh, just to make sure that they are. This doesn't guarantee their safety or effectiveness, but it does give you some comfort knowing that these organizations have um, looked into the product. Yeah, and I would reinforce too that talking to the pharmacist is really good. They're so knowledgeable and they could help you with your situation, what type to take, because there's a quite a variety. Um, but then how can we protect our gut microbiome? So, you know, we all recommend the Mediterranean diet and lifestyle, and that's what all of our Being Well classes focus on is that way. So eating the prebiotic foods, the artichokes, bananas, asparagus, oats, we have some oats here, apples, um, eat whole grains. So, you know, when you're looking at a label for a bread or cereal, you want the first ingredient to say whole wheat or something whole, that's to know that. Um, and whole grains contain fiber and beneficial carbohydrates, which are digested by gut bacteria to benefit weight. Cancer risk, you can mention it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna hold it up if you oh. wanted to, but we just have some barley here, which is another whole grain. Yeah. And I love barley, um, it's a great thing to add to um, like chilies and stews and things like that. Oats, oats are always good. I know uh, one of our patients met, um, suggested, well, they were making them um, breakfast cookies and I thought, oh, that sounded good. But they were putting nuts and dried fruit in there and oatmeal and thought, that sounded good. Um, attempt a plant-based diet, so trying to cut down on meats and, you know, have some meatless meals. Um, but attempting a plant-based diet may help reduce the level levels of disease-causing bacteria, such as E. coli, and reduce inflammation and cholesterol. Eat foods rich in polyphenols, um, so plant-based compounds found in red wine, green tea, dark chocolate, um, <laughs> olive oil, and whole grains. They are broken down by the microbiome to stimulate healthy bacterial growth. And when we mention these, we say in moderation. And as far as red wine, you want to check with your physician before even drinking. So, um, and how can we protect our microbiome? Eat a diverse range of whole foods. And whole foods would be starting with the whole vegetable and doing your cutting up and all getting away from processed foods. Um, and that leads to a diverse microbiome. 
Try legumes and fruit, which contain a lot of fiber. Um, eat fermented foods, so your yogurt, sauerkraut, kefir. Um, limit your intake of artificial sweeteners. Some people have a sensitivity to artificial sweeteners. The sugar alcohols um, can be a big problem. Yeah, especially um, sucralose. Right. Yeah, I don't tolerate sucralose very well. It sometimes can cause like bloating and gas, and it is in a lot of like diet drinks. And um, I, I recently found out it's in a lot of those coffee creamers as well. So yeah. something to keep in mind if you feel like you're having continual or even problems. sugar-free mints or mm -hmm. gum, gum, toothpaste, exactly. even. Yeah, so be careful. Stevia is okay, but it's the sugar alcohols that um, people can be sensitive to. So like. I'll give an example. <laughs> Go to Starbucks. Um, we just do. Well, I just do like one pump of the flavoring instead of their usual four pumps. So I'm getting a little bit of the regular, but I don't want the sugar-free stuff because I just not crazy over that. Um, so by cutting way down is helpful. Sugar can promote the growth of bad bacteria in the gut, and this can lead to irritation in the gut, which could manifest itself um, as an autoimmune response. And depression is thought to actually be your body's response um, to swelling in the gut. So, um, yeah, so research can, um, having a good gut microbiome can help with depression and stress. So how can we include both prebiotics and probiotics in our diet? And I, I like how Nancy said, you know, if you can get a variety of fruits and vegetables, then that's a good idea because there are all these many micronutrients that, yeah. um, not mentioning age, but when we were in school, we didn't learn about all these tiny things. And I feel like as the years progress, we're going to be learning more. So it's good to overall get a variety. But there are some tips that you can do. Um, one, just if you're trying to fit yogurt in, you can, um, a lot of us, I feel like, use yogurt and granola or yogurt with cereal or having maybe yogurt with fruit. Um, and so here we talk about having yogurt with bananas. Tonight, we're gonna show you how to use yogurt with tacos. As a um, source of like pretending it's sour cream. Yeah, but so you can use yogurt. it as um, a dip. Um, tonight, we're gonna add some spices, but you could also add cinnamon and use it as a fruit dip. Um, so it is a good idea to have it. It'll give yeah. you those cultures and not as much of the concentrated fat. Okay. I think a lot of people don't think that the yogurt tastes very good. Yeah. But when you put like a spice in it um, or even a citrus, it tastes really good. I just was at Trader Joe's this morning and I saw in their dairy section, they had little containers of yogurt and oats. So they were overnight oats. You can do that easily yourself. But I thought if you want to just try it, if you never had it, it's a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but here you're getting the pre and the probiotics right in that little dish. So mm -hmm. it's kind of cool. Yeah, they kind of yeah. feed each other. Um, stir fries are great for the asparagus and onion and garlic. And, um, so, you know, having the stir fry where you get a variety of those pre and probiotics is a great idea. Adding kimchi or sauerkraut to salads um, with artichokes right here. Um, we're getting close to uh, the St. Patrick's Day in March, so it's a good idea to have some sauerkraut around. You can make some little sandwiches. Um, I, I like it this time of year for that reason. Um, and then we talked about adding barley to soups, but you could also add it to casseroles or sauces. Um, it just needs to um, hydrate a little bit with whatever liquid you're using. Uh, try artichokes and salads. I also like them on sandwiches. Uh, you can chop them up. They're delicious. We actually made um, a pasta dish yeah. with um, just chopped up artichokes. You really don't have to do much. They're so flavorful. They have a good source of fiber, and then they're giving you the prebiotic. And even like baking chicken breasts and then topping it with chopped up asparagus, um, or not asparagus, um, artichokes. artichokes. But I was going to say, too, I had this recipe where you make your own focaccia bread, and you could do like a whole grain, and you bake it, but then you put... Uh, yogurt, plain yogurt over it, and then asparagus, long strips, and then you bake it, and it's like a little tart almost, like a focaccia, or, you know, like an appetizer. Mm -hmm. So Is the yogurt plain? Yeah. 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 That's so it adds, delicious. that's your sauce, really. Mm -hmm. And then you have your asparagus, and then you season it. Garlic, you probably put artichoke hearts in. 
and two. I think eggs is a good way too to get some veggies in in the morning and use your garlic and your onions and maybe even some uh, chopped up leek if you haven't used that before. It kind of operates yeah. like an onion. Let me just explain these. Um, so when you get this, I this is really more the good part, but I cut that off and then you I put on my cutting board. I just do little slices and I throw that all into a colander. And then use your hands and they're like little circles and they all come apart and you got to do that because there's dirt in between i think like i thought i saw at trader joe's they have a pre-wash frozen that way but it's it's not a big deal it's it's kind of fun and you've got all these little rings in there but you got to like loosen it up in your colander with running water and then you can make soups with it you can do like a little olive oil in a stock pot put your leeks in there, put potatoes, and then go from there with a the soup. I mean, we probably all have um, Alexa, whatever, <laughs> and get a recipe, you know, and it's good. And that's like an Irish thing too, with um, the season, so. It was like a mild onion, but it, it is yeah. really good in eggs, I, I oh, think sure. too, um, or yeah. quiche. That would be a quick, easy way to use it. Yeah. Um, or in um, pasta. Oh, I just thought of it. Being well, too, had a leek soup. We did. That's right. I wasn't here, so, but yeah. yeah. did it, though, so if they cooked it all the way down, so you got to really yeah. cook them down, down, down more than you would think, because yeah. they're a little tough. Yeah. But once you get them going, yeah. you can throw them in anything. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. good. It adds really, good flavor. Really tasty. Yeah. Yeah. So putting it all together, the microbiome can be significantly altered by diet. Your gut microbiome plays an important role in health and it helps control <laughs> digestion, but also helps boost immune function. So that's what we're finding out more and more about, about all the studies that are going on now about the microbiome and which foods are helping. Um, it's a really exciting area. Um, a healthy choice of microbes and good bacteria in the intestines can offer a lot of a variety of benefits. We know that the support of the healthy microbes, like eating a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, whole grains and fermented foods can really help your microbiome. So we wanna make sure that you're kind of following along with um, the Mediterranean diet, eating from the rainbow and getting that variety. Yeah. Will, which will really help. And I wanna to mention too, research has shown that the gut microbiome starts at birth. So when a mother delivers a baby, if it's a natural birth, they're gonna have more of their gut microbiome. But if it was cesarean, they'll still have some, but it won't be as potent as when you deliver naturally. So that's where it starts. And then it goes from there, um, just through eating different foods and our body's development. And just having that variety is so important. So thinking of ways to, to fit some of these foods in, and it doesn't take much. Um, just a reminder, we do have a lot of recipes. Oh, yeah. I was talking to a couple of patients today and they were trying to find recipes. And I said, don't forget about the culinary nutrition section on the NM Living Well Cancer Resources website. Um, there are a ton of recipes. And then I think there are links on there to the YouTube videos. Is that right? Or do you oh, know? No, but the YouTube video, I'm linking these here too. Okay, so oh, the if YouTube you, videos. If you YouTube, YouTube, just put in like Northwestern Medicine Living Well, it'll pop up. Okay, okay. so if you, if you didn't hear that, if you um, just look up Northwestern Medicine Living Well, and you will see um, a lot in the YouTube area, you'll see a lot of um, videos that we have done. And um, just to give you some tips about Mediterranean recipes, there are a lot of them on there. So I was going to mention too that those recipes that are on there are tried and true. There's ones that we've been doing. So mm -hmm. it's not like, oh, random. You know, they're ones that we use. So right. I, I just in our classes. Yeah. I just any questions right now? I have one virtually. Oh. Uh, talking about soy, can you talk a little bit about avoid if you have to which breast cancers need to avoid oh, yeah. for soy? So people who are estrogen positive breast cancer, which is the most common have to avoid the ingredient isolated soy protein. And that's where you're gonna be checking food labels to see if it's on there. And sometimes a label will say contains soy, that's a clue to look further. If you see soy lecithin or soybean oil, those are okay. It's just that isolated soy protein that you wanna avoid. 
but soy itself, like tofu and, and nami are fine. Um, Sometimes we did a class on this and we did find it in Hormel chili and stovetop stuffing. So anything that could be processed, um, you want to check the label carefully and just make sure that it doesn't have soy isolate or soy protein. Sometimes yeah. it's kind of a different yeah. name, like Nancy said. So frozen dinners are common to have it. Frozen meatballs, but not all. You check different labels. Um, canned soup, like some Campbell's and Progresso have it. Um, protein bars and protein drinks. But again, it's not across the board. You, some are okay, so you just got to read labels. But that's a good question because that can be new for people. And I have to avoid it too. And I really haven't had a problem because when I grocery shop, I grocery shop more the outer perimeter where more of my choices are in the produce section, which doesn't have a label. It's all fresh, low fat dairy, your fresh meats, your whole grains. It's up and down the aisles where all the processed foods are. That's where you have to be careful. And then we had a question here. Hey, can you just say more on um, slide number 18, that um, sugar manifests itself in autoimmune response? What is autoimmune response? We had a question about slide 18. Um, so it talks about sugar in the gut and causing bad bac bacteria and increasing the growth of bad bacteria. So a lot of um, a lot of people ask us this question, like, is sugar terrible for us? And what we recommend is if someone, for example, is having soda all day long, where you're getting some kind of added sugar throughout the day for every meal and every time you're eating, that's too much. <laughs> Um, if you're in treatment, um, sometimes foods that have a little bit of sugar are going to be something that may be the only thing that you can eat. And so in that case, it's okay to have that. Um, overall, we the U.S. Dietary Guidelines recommends less than six grams of added sugar per serving. So you've got the total carbohydrate and then you've got the um, added sugar. That would be should be less than six grams. Now, Certain foods are going to be higher than that. So what I usually recommend, what we say is um, kind of look at your whole day's calories. And if you have an occasional treat, that's OK. Moderation is what we promote. And, um, you know, no food is a bad food, but we just don't want to overdo it. So that's what we mean by, you know, being careful about having too much sugar all day long because it can lead to health problems and hard to balance blood sugar. And, and for weight control too. And for weight but control. But also some diagnosis like colon or rectal cancer, if they're having too much sugar, it, it can actually cause like they call it a dumping syndrome, like where it increases the frequency of diarrhea. So that's a real good place to you know eliminate um, so it doesn't add to the problem. Uh, but it's really more for weight control that we say cut down on your sugars and sweets. Um, but like Mary said, if someone's going through treatment and, you know, they want to have a milkshake, we're fine with that because it's calories and, you know, contributing to prevention of their weight loss. But in general, the Mediterranean diet just says limit sugars and sweets, eat regular healthy foods. But if you had like a little dark chocolate once, well, it's not that big a deal. Just not skip having a whole meal like coffee cake for lunch instead of something more balanced, you know, with protein and all. So we're going to do um, a recipe. Uh, it's a baked taco recipe. I love this recipe because it really gives you kind of, um, you can change it up depending on what you like. So that's really fun. And tacos are usually a pretty popular dish. So um, I've already started here with, um, let me see if I can see what you can see. Yeah, here we go. So this is the ground turkey and I had a little olive oil in there and kind of got that started. And then um, we're gonna be using today um, some refried beans. And can you see the cam? I know, I'm switching. Okay. okay. <laughs> the power outage yesterday for over this. Oh yeah. So, um, if you if you can't see me, that's OK, but um, we're using a vegetarian refried beans, which is the lower fat one and then um, some just diced canned tomatoes. 
you can use fresh as well. Um, and but what, I'm so, well, Mary was saying low fat version. A lot of baked beans have lard added to, or like uh, the refried beans, the regular have a lard added to it, so it's got a lot of fat. But these are the vegetarian, so that wouldn't be in there. So it's that's good. Yeah, so we're just going to add that turkey and beans, and I've got the, the stove going here, but the turkey's already cooked up. So we're just going to, um, the tomatoes and beans, we're going to kind of mix them together with the turkey. And um, I like using the ground turkey, but you could use ground turkey sausage or chicken sausage. You can use, um, I love using uh, black beans, so you can use the black bean refried beans. Sometimes I'll kind of look in my pantry and see what I have. If I have, um, if I have refried beans, I'll use those. If I have black beans, I'll use those. And sometimes if I'm making a big recipe, I'll just toss in the black beans on top of this, or you can use kidney beans. I kind of like the texture of using the black beans too. So that's kind of fun. Um, but you can see it's kind of, um, it, there's a little bit less liquid because we move, we uh, mix the tomatoes and beans together ahead of time. But um, we're just kind of heating those up and making the filling here. And then we're gonna add, um, I have some uh, chili powder that we used. There you can see it. Um, chili powder and then cumin. And then today we used onion powder, but you can also, um, at home, I probably use a fresh onion and fresh garlic, and we're going to put those spices in and a little bit of um, black pepper. So I'm just going to kind of mix those together, and um, you can see it comes together really quickly. One thing that's nice about having the refried beans in here is it kind of all um, sticks together in the taco nicely when you're baking it. So that's coming together pretty nicely here. All right, I'm going to talk about toppings. Um, I'm going to get this started while Mary's continuing to do that cooking. We're going to make a little guacamole or a little mashed up avocado. I'm just going to add lime juice to it. Um, so I'll work on that while she's um, doing her stuff yeah, there. You can so I'll just show you how I do it. I, I just start and I just take my knife and go around the whole thing and then do that again. So I then it just peels up. On the I do. I don't hold it in my hand. <laughs> Some people I know might have in the past. Yeah, yeah, that's not a good idea to hold it in your hand. So make sure you um you then you on kind the of cutting board. Like peel it like a banana, then it just comes right off very easily by just doing those little cuts. And so that's my way. And then I just kind of wiggle it to get the it two halves and then the pits there, and I get rid of that. So yeah, this is a nice avocado. And then I just do that and you've got your two halves and then I'll put in this bowl and then I'll start um, mashing it up. Yeah, I like um, I like when we have like tips for using like butternut squash. If, you know, sometimes these things are hard to cut and people are intimidated. So being able to know how to quickly do an avocado with a butternut squash. We talked about on uh, the spaghetti squash last time where you just you can use a fork to prick all the way around and then put it in the microwave for one minute, and that makes it a lot easier to cut and peel. So some of these tricks, I think, um, help make cooking a little bit less um, intimidating because nutrition starts in the kitchen. It right? does, I know. <laughs> we love that. Because yeah, if we're right. promoting cooking, and then you have more control over what you're eating, what the ingredients are, you can go with the fresh ingredients. Uh, so yeah. I'm just, oh, oh, I'm just gonna <laughs> slide real quick. Um, and then I'm going to squeeze it in here. So yeah, okay. I'm just going to add some garlic um, to make sure to give it some freshness and give it some yummy flavor. And I'm going to put two in. So these are already peeled, but you can. Um, one trick I like to do for garlic is um, you can take the the uh, unpeeled garlic. There you go. You can take that and take your knife and kind of lay it flat on the garlic and use the heel of your hand to smash it. And let's do, this one's kind of a flat one. But when you do that, then the peel comes right off and that's an easy way to kind of get rid of it. And then you can either, if you want, instead of doing the garlic press, you can just take this one, cut off the ends a little bit 
and then you can just chop it up as easily and throw it in like that. So it just depends on how you want to do it. Oh, I'm I'm smelling that citrus. Nancy. Yeah, it smells really good. Lime juice. I'm adding a little garlic just for flavor. So. Sometimes a little tiny pinch of salt. We're not big on using salt, but sometimes with guacamole, a uh, little pinch. I'm not adding it, but you can. We just use more herbs and fresh herbs and citrus to give flavor. Onions, leeks. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm a big fan of cumin and chili powder. And uh, I feel like cumin really just gives so much flavor. Great, and then we're, one of, another of our topping is using the plain yogurt, and we're going to add some of the same spices that Mary used, a little cumin and chili powder, and that'll just, you know, give a little bit of flavor to the yogurt, and that'll be in place of sour cream. And that's where we're getting our probiotic from this, the yogurt here. So, are you ready to yeah. do a little thing? Yeah, okay. so... Now I'm going to show you um, how uh, to do the baked taco part. The filling is almost done. I'm letting the garlic cook a little bit more. Um, I just do a quick spray in the muffin tin. And then um, you can use a bigger taco. Um, today we're using these smaller tacos. And that makes a really nice kind of sample size. Um, but you can use like a six inch, but I wouldn't get the 12 inch. The 12 inch is going to have too much tortilla on the top. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so all you do is you fold it in half and then fold it in half again, and then you open one side to make a little pocket. So then you just put the pocket on the underside of the um, hand so that the little pocket kind of stays open. Can you see that okay? So those are pretty easy to do. Just fold them over. And then when you're, I think our filling is just about done. So then you take your filling. And if it looks like it's kind of opening up a little bit, that's okay, because the filling will kind of keep it together and get, weight it down a little bit. And so you're going to add your filling into the little tacos there. They're already starting to look really cute. So these are great for um, a party because they're a little bit fancier than like a regular taco. Um, kids really like them as well. We've used them in some kids cooking classes and those have been fun. So I'm just going to kind of fill these up. And then once we get these filled, we're going to put them in the oven um, with a little cheese on top. And I think the six inch ones stay can, together a little bit more. I and can then fill if you want to. Yeah. Or can we move the pot? Um, yeah. In the center here. And then. Or how about if I get you do the cheese? Oh, sure. sure. All right. Then I'm going to turn. So we'll just put these on. And then we're going to put a little cheese and we're going to bake the um, tacos with the cheese. And the cheese is going to get all melty. But as you can see, this is coming together really quickly. If you just add on a couple of minutes for the turkey um, to brown it, then uh, that's about all you need to do. You brown that and you add the filling, add the tortillas, put a little cheese, and then they bake for about eight to 10 minutes. And you add the white cheese. The, yeah, I use the white and I can use I, I brought the white mozzarella or the cheddar out because I like to kind of combine them or you can do the white as a little garnish. So just whatever you think will work for you. Um, sometimes if I don't have either one of those cheeses, I'll just use whatever cheese I have in the fridge. <laughs> um, and it all it all works. So just kind of um, fill them up and. And hope for the best. No. <laughs> I'll put a little more in there before the cheese. Oh. <laughs> so they're pretty fun to do. And then um, we'll just oh, put those. Done. Yeah, okay. that's it. So we'll put those in the oven. And you want to put a little mozzarella right on top? Sure. Okay. Now, while she's doing that, I'm just going to show you here. Um, these are the tacos that we did already, 
and the cheese is all nice and melted. And um, I think they're like a nice little bite size um, sampling. And then we're gonna add some um, toppings to these. Is anyone here gluten free? Because we can make you one without the tortilla. Are there any dietary restrictions? Okay. 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 All right. So we'll put the toppings on. If you want to open the oven, I can stick it in. Okay. So these are actually good too. Like if you want to make them and reheat them the next day, they hold in the fridge pretty well for the next day. You can put them in a lunchbox. Um, and then we're going to just add some of these toppings. Is everyone okay with avocado on theirs? Okay, so we'll do that. And yogurt as well. So we'll just show you um, a couple here with the toppings, and then we'll put some tomato. We've got those fresh tomatoes that Nancy did, and the fresh cilantro and lime, and one in a bowl. Show the finished product. Yeah, avocados, I think, are a good time to get this time. This was a beautiful avocado. It's nice. really pretty. And then, you know, when uh, you go to check it, just hold one and just real gently squeeze. If there's a little give, it's it's perfect. But if it's too squishy, it's, it's done. You don't want to use it. So just a little squeeze of lemon. And there you have it. Let's see if you can see where we are. There we go. So there's a nice little taco. 